Welcome to fall <laughs> in Wisconsin. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Dan, I'm into hiking, backpacking gear, all that stuff. And if you guys are into that stuff too, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That is what this channel is all about. Today we're gonna to talk about um, just the gear I brought on my last trip. I got back from about 10 days ago. I hiked, finally, I hiked the Kettle Moraine in Wisconsin, my home state. This is what I brought. Um, we're gonna walk through it piece by piece. I'll pull it all out for you guys. Um, I'm not really gonna get into like clothing and layering and that kind of stuff. I'll definitely do that in a completely separate video. Otherwise this thing would take way too long for you guys. But I wanted to just walk through the gear. I thought it would be really helpful now that winter is finally just about here, at least it's here in Wisconsin, it feels like it, um, for you guys to be able to kind of get an idea of what may be good for you guys out on the trail. A lot of guys like to go winter backpacking. A lot of guys wonder what other people bring and that sort of thing. So hopefully this will help you guys out. The weather on that trip um, was forecast to get into the low 20s and it definitely did. It got into the low 20s overnight. During the day, however, it got up into the high 30s. So there was a real big, you know, drastic gap, I think, in temperature, almost a 20 degree, you know, difference between the daytime and the nighttime. So um, there's a lot of reasons why I brought what I brought. And in Wisconsin, you have to reserve shelters. So you can't just go backcountry camping and stealth camping and that kind of thing. So uh, it just worked out that where we parked was very close to where we were uh, actually at. So that actually helped me out because I was able to leave stuff in a car to test out and kind of go back and forth. And that's why it's a lot bigger of a backpack. All right, so let's start on the outside of the pack. Oh, and also the clothes I'm wearing, I didn't wear on this hike. I'm just wearing this stuff because I'm in my backyard, okay? So I felt like wearing jeans today, that's what I did. I would not normally wear jeans on a cold weather hike. This is my Tyvek. This is my ground sheet for the tent that I brought. And I chose to tent camp uh, this time because I was testing out a brand new four season tent, which we'll get to in a minute. So back here, um, I brought my water filter, which is uh, my Knock Vecto, the 2019 version. Highly, 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 highly recommend this water bag. Um, I didn't need it because there was actually water sources along the trail that we were using, so I never even needed to filter water, but uh, I highly recommend this awesome, awesome water bag, the dirty water bag. Um, inside of here, I just keep some extra caps um, and then a different sport bottle cap. It's my gravity feed system. Um, and then I use the Sawyer Squeeze as my water filter. Um, as a chair, and this may surprise you, but I didn't bring my chair because I brought so much stuff. I didn't bring my beloved Helinox Chair Zero chair I ended up bringing this this is my Dutchware sit pad which uh, got a little close to the fire as you can see over this trip this thing has been on every trip of mine for uh, the last probably three or four years um, I just bring it along as sort of a backup and it's just nice to pull out for quick breaks then I've got my poop kit I've um, just got some uh, wet wipes in here, a bottle of hand sanitizer, and some toilet paper inside of a Ziploc bag. And then I kept my medical kit back here. This is the Adventure Medical Kit 5 medical kit that's totally modified. Uh, I've emptied this bag out. I put all my own stuff in here. If you're interested in finding out what's in this bag, I'll link a video right here for you guys. And that's pretty much what I kept on the outside of the pack. On the side of the pack here, I kept the tent poles for the tent that I was testing out. And then uh, I've just got some water bottles here. I got a smart water bottle, a one liter smart water bottle, and then a second one liter smart water bottle. Um, I also carried another half liter bottle with a aqua clip attached to it that I put right on the sternum strap here. And then I also carried one trekking pole with me because I really brought so much weight. I really didn't even need it, honestly. I, I hardly used it at all. There was a couple sections of trail that I pulled it out, but I probably could have left this at home as well. On the sternum strap, I always keep my Garmin InReach Mini. Uh, we had tons of cell phone service there. Um, I didn't need this uh, for that reason, but there are some sections of the trail where uh, it does break up. So I bring this mainly because it gives my family peace of mind. They just like to know that I'm using something like this. And then in the hip belt pockets over here, I carried my buff that I'm wearing right now. And then I also carried this awesome, awesome, down beanie made by UGQ. It's their UGQ Scully. Uh, this was literally so hot, even in 20 degree weather, that I actually had to take it off from time to time to uh, cool off my head. In this hip belt pocket, I just kept, you know, some snacks and that kind of thing. So nothing major in here. Oh, and then the backpack that I used, you guys might notice it's a different backpack than what I've normally been carrying. It is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 3400. 
I was testing out this backpack for winter, um, and man, I will tell you, I was super impressed with this thing. I mean, I didn't really hike that far. I only hiked about 13 miles in it, and I had a little over 20, maybe 25 pounds worth of weight in it, but it carried so well, it was really comfortable. And the other thing I really liked about this backpack is that the hip belt pouches are attached directly to the hip belt. So opening it with one hand, I could do easily. That always frustrated with me with my Z-Pex backpack because the hip belt pouches, they're able to be taken on and off. And so you gotta use two hands because of that to open and close the zipper. Uh, it makes it pretty difficult. And then also on the outside of the pack, I carried a Peak Designs uh, camera clip here for the DSLR camera that I used to film that trip. So I will have a uh, full video of that trip for you guys in the next couple weeks. All right, let's break open the inside of the pack. Some of this gear I just put in here because I didn't wear this jacket on the trip, but I wanted you guys to see the jackets that I brought on the trip. One was this marmot jacket. Uh, this was my uh, outside jacket. This was the heavier jacket that I wore. Um, and then I also wore um, this Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisper jacket as well. I wore this one, the Mountain Hardware first, and then I put the uh, marmot jacket over it to layer it. Um, I find layering down jackets works way better than buying a big, big bulky jacket for weather that's going to kind of vary because you can regulate your temperature a whole lot easier and it really works really well. So this definitely kept me warm enough. On top here I kept the Nemo Kunai two-person four-season tent. I fell in love with this thing. The difference in temperature between the inside of the tent and the outside of the tent was about eight degrees um, and it worked really, really well. Then I kept on top of the pack just where the tent was as well is my ditty bag. This is my Hilltop Pax ditty bag. Uh, these, these guys are awesome. Made out of Dyneema and they'll print whatever you want on there. So I had them print my logo on it. That was pretty cool. Inside the ditty bag, I'll be real, real quick. I kept a toothbrush. I kept a battery bank. I got a headlamp in here, uh, some hand warmers, a little bit of repair tape, a small knife, and then I also kept a small lighter in here just to be able to light a fire. Um, also a little bit of a fire starter and a small bit of cord in case I needed to hang a bag or anything like that, which is really unnecessary in Wisconsin. But if I wanted to keep it away from rodents and that kind of thing, at least I had the ability to do that. So, and then also the one thing I want to tell you guys is that I did change up my headlamp on this trip. I used the Nightcore NU25. I haven't used this in quite some time. Uh, the reason I went back to this one is because the Petzl Bindi that I had been wanting to use um, reacts with the shutter speed on my camera differently. So it kind of messes up my night shots. And so this one doesn't. So honestly, that's really the only reason I brought this one out on that trip. And then I kept my food bag here. This was also made by Hilltop Packs. It's a Dyneema food bag. This is where I kept my food, kept my cook kit, which is the cook kit I've been using for a long, long time. You guys probably know all about this. It's the Evernew Titanium Pasta Pot. Inside of here, I have my Soto Windmaster stove, and I did go gas canister this time. Um, I know it was a little bit colder, but it worked just fine. I mean, there was a, uh, a little bit of a lull in the uh, fire uh, coming out of the stove, but honestly, it didn't really matter much. It definitely boiled water pretty easily, so this worked out great. And then my clothing bag, I opted to use this. Uh, I had this laying around. It's a light AF uh, food bag, so I just use it as a clothing bag. Um, all I put inside here, because I pretty much wore everything that I was uh, needing, I kept one extra pair of darn tough socks, and then I kept this really, really thick wool socks that I like to sleep in. Um, I got these from, I think it's Bass Pro Shop. If you're not familiar with Bass Pro Shop, I think it's the same company as Cabela's now. Uh, but these are redhead socks, brand socks. Um, I'm not even sure if you can find these anymore. But they're really thick, really warm wool socks. I wore these to sleep in. Then I slept on uh, a piece of gear I was testing out. This is the Thermarest Neoair X Therm. Uh, it has an R value of 5.7. Um, it did really well really well kept me nice and toasty warm uh, never got cold one time sleeping on this i really enjoyed that and then i kept my two pillows wrapped up in pad straps that i had for my quilt these are the trekology pillows and then literally this is the epitome of the most awesome quilt you will ever see check this out this is the ugq bandit top quilt made in this awesome hex cam pattern. And then I had this blaze orange interior here. Uh, this is a zero degree top quilt and the foot box is completely sewn in. I had extra insulation put in it. 
Isn't that just an awesome pattern for winter? I just love this thing. It's got this cool draft collar on here. And then also um, on here as well is I was able to try out their brand new tensioning system. There's now this shock cord that they put inside of the edge of the outside of the quilt here. So if you got your quilt laying on top of you, you can pull these uh, shock cords here. It will tension up the side, wrap it up underneath you almost. So that way that draft uh, doesn't have the ability to get underneath you as easily. I mean, I also used it with pad straps as well, but man, that made such a difference. It really just wrapped the quilt up around you almost like a sleeping bag. So the UGQ top quilt, Bandit top quilt, awesome. Then one more piece of gear I forgot to bring out here is my rain jacket. I used it as a hard shell. I'll throw a little B-roll up on the screen of that. It is the Outdoor Research Helium 2 rain jacket. Uh, that worked out really nicely as well to perform a barrier to protect that down that I was wearing because when down gets wet, it doesn't really work. So uh, that definitely helped and it fit just nicely over the top of my Marmot down jacket. Oh, and then also one more thing. These are the shoes I wore. I just wore my uh, Ultra Timp 1.5s uh, with some regular socks. I didn't bring boots. Uh, these did fine. My feet stayed warm as I was hiking and then when I got to camp, they were wet, but I put them by the fire and they dried out anything up to about 20 degrees and i'm definitely wearing trail runners below 20 we'll see how it goes but um, i might uh, wear some boots that i've got uh, that i hike in every once in a while but hey and if you guys are interested in supporting this channel uh, you guys know that uh, youtube um, takes a lot of work for content creators to put out videos week after week um, it takes a lot of time to be able to do this so i created a patreon account so that you guys can help support this channel uh, I would be honored and excited if you guys would be willing to do that. Um, if you want to check that out, I'll put the information right here on the screen. And also, um, I've decided to start doing some YouTube consulting. If you guys have channels uh, that you're wanting to grow, um, if you just want to have some ideas thrown your way, or if you want me to look at some of your stuff that you guys are doing and kind of give you my feedback on it and my advice, I was able to grow this channel from zero to 36,000 in one year. Uh, so um, I'm hopeful to be able to share some of the things that I've learned with some of you guys You can access that through the patreon as well If you guys like this video make sure you hit that like button also subscribe for more Make sure you hit the bell notification so I can send you a video every time it's released and I will see you on the next one What's up YouTube? Holla back at your boy